Hi everyone, my name is Brent Weinberg. I'm a neuroradiologist and today we're going to talk a little bit about non-contrast MRA geography of the neck. I'll give you a little bit of a search pattern and tell you how to look at these studies. So a non-contrast MRA of the neck, you're frequently going to be doing it to evaluate for occlusion or narrowing. The most frequent indication is going to be stroke, but you may be looking at it to assess an area of prior narrowing or prior dissection. You may also be asked to do it for vascular injury, such as trauma or penetrating injury, but this is much more likely to be evaluated on CT angiogram. The most common technique used to do a non-contrast MRI of the neck is time of flight imaging, in which this signal is dependent on inflowing blood to create the image. Now, when I go through an MRI of the neck, I have a general pattern that I follow. I first look at the aortic arch, then I'll take a look at the internal carotid arteries, first right and then left. Then I'll go to the vertebral arteries, then right and left. And then finally, I'll take a look at the projections at the end. When we open these images, most frequently we're going to see an axial two-dimensional image through the upper chest that's uh, going to start at the aortic arch, which is this structure you see here. Now, one of the better things about MR angiograms is they tend to not have much background, so you don't see a lot of uh, soft tissue signal. You do want to make sure you look at the lung apices, make sure there's not a mass there. You want to look at the thyroid as you pass it, but because there's very little background, you don't have to spend a lot of time looking for adjacent structures. Here you see the aortic arch, and you're going to scroll up and you'll see the origins of the great vessels. Now here you have the three vessels which most commonly come off of the arch. You have the brachiocephalic artery, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. Now you'll see that this person has a common variant here. This is what's colloquially referred to as a bovine arch, or a common origin of the brachiocephalic artery, and the left common carotid artery. That's the most common arch variant. Most commonly, the normal anatomy is that both have a separate origin from the arch. In this case, that's just a normal variant. As you look at these vessels, you want to check each vessel to make sure there's no stenosis at its takeoff from the aorta, because that's a common place of narrowing. Once you've come up through the arch, then you want to identify each vessel and then follow it as you go up. So we'll start by taking a look at this brachiocephalic artery. And it's going to bifurcate into two main vessels, the right subclavian artery and the right common carotid artery. So as it comes up a little further, you can see it a little better. So here you have those two vessels. And then you have your matching vessels on the other side, the left common carotid artery and the left subclavian artery. Then you can start your search pattern and go up. So I go from anterior first. So I look at the right common carotid first and then the left common. And then I go up uh, to the posterior circulation. So we'll just follow this common carotid up. I scroll up, you see some smaller branches here. And you see by now the vertebral arteries have come into the picture. So we'll go back and look at those in a second. But as you're tracking the common carotid artery, you want to make sure there's no areas of significant narrowing, no outpouching, uh, no other abnormalities. And as you get up a little higher in the neck, the common carotid artery is going to branch into two major arteries. The external carotid artery is here and anterior, and the internal carotid artery is posterior here. Now, if you're having trouble telling the difference, the external carotid artery is the one that has branches, so it will branch more immediately in the neck. So you can take a quick look at the external carotid. You see a number of branches come off here and supply the soft tissues of the neck. But if we go back down to the bifurcation, this portion of the internal carotid artery just past the bifurcation is the area of most frequently narrowed in the neck. So you want to take a nice close look at that, make sure there's no atherosclerotic disease causing narrowing there. And then you can follow this internal carotid artery all the way up through the remainder of the neck and into the Petrus Canal, where it's going to become the intracranial portions of the internal carotid artery. Now, once I'm happy with that, I'll come back down to the beginning of my study, and I'll follow the same pattern for my left internal carotid artery. So I'll start here. So you have the common carotid artery here before the bifurcation. It's going to go up. You want to track it as you go up. Again, looking for any areas of narrowing, any significant atherosclerotic plaques. 
and we don't see any. We have our carotid bifurcation here now, the external carotid and the internal carotid here, posterior. And you're going to see the internal carotid comes up and goes into the skull base here in the Petrus Canal and again becomes intracranial ICA. So now we're happy with the anterior circulation. I don't personally spend a lot of time looking at the external carotid branches. You do want to glance at them, make sure they have a normal branching pattern, make sure there are no abnormal areas of contrast filling, uh, but typically you just look at them rather quickly. Now, once I'm happy that I've seen everything I need to see in the anterior circulation, um, we'll start again from the bottom and look at the vertebral arteries, again, going from right to left. So as I scroll up here, I'm going to see my subclavian artery on the right. That's going to be the source of my vertebral artery. So here it comes off here and it's going to go posteriorly. It will run anterior to the spinal column here for just a second before entering the transverse foramen. Now, if you're having trouble finding the vertebral origin, which you can sometime, you can come up here and then scroll back down until you, until you find it. Now you want to scrutinize the origin, make sure there's no significant narrowing at the origin. The vertebral origins are common sites of vascular narrowing. So as you follow this up, you want to again be looking for any areas of significant vascular narrowing, any significant atherosclerotic plaques. Once you get near the skull base, it's going to leave the transverse foramen, have an external portion here, uh, before then turning anterior again and entering, becoming the intracranial vertebral artery. Now we'll do the same thing for the left. We'll do it more quickly this time. So we'll find the subclavian artery. And then we should see a vertebral artery origin around here. You see it right there and it's going to be paired with the other side, and it's going to run up, enter the transverse foramen, come up, before it exiting the transverse foramen, being a little tortuous here, and then entering the dura here to become the intracranial portion of the left vertebral artery, and subsequently the basilar artery. Once you are satisfied with your axial images, then you can move on to the projectional images. Much like an MRA of the head, for an MRA of the neck, you will also frequently get projectional images that have been recreated from the data. These can show you different uh, overviews of the data where you can rotate them around a little bit, get a general overview. Here you see all of the vessels are included. Uh, here you see the right common carotid and the right carotid bifurcation. Here you see the right vertebral artery. And you kind of lose it here, and I suspect this is because whoever created the projection cut off that portion of the vertebral artery because it was posterior. So don't mistake that for an occlusion because we didn't see it on our axial image. Here you see the vessels on the left. So again, the left common carotid becoming the external and internal carotids of the bifurcation here, and the left vertebral artery becoming the basilar artery. Here you can even get a little general overview of what the intracranial circulation looks like. Then you'll often have views of the individual vessels which have been cut out. Here you're looking at an individual cutout of the right common carotid artery. So here you see the subclavian on the side, the brachiocephalic artery, becoming the right common carotid, and then you have the carotid bifurcation here. So this is set up in a rotational way where you can rotate it around, take a look, make sure you're not missing any areas of significant narrowing here. There might be a little bit of uh, subtle narrowing there, but nothing that uh, we would call stenosis. Then you're going to have a similar view of your left common carotid artery. You see the same thing, the left common carotid artery coming off of the arch there. And here you have the external carotid in these branches and the internal carotid. And again, you can just rotate around and make sure that you don't see any areas of narrowing. Finally, here we have a cutout of the vertebral arteries. You see it started on a lateral projection, but as you rotate around, you can see the two vertebral arteries uh, coming up, uh, running in the transverse frame in here, and then before having kind of a torturous turn and entering the dura, here you have the basilar artery and the two paired PCAs, so you can get a good overview of that. 
these projection images also give you typically a pretty nice overview of the vert origins. That way you can try to decide if there's any stenosis there, because as I mentioned earlier, that's one of the most common areas of narrowing. Finally, today we've taken a look at a non-contrast MR angiogram of the neck. Some MR angiograms of the neck can be done with contrast. It tends to vary based on your institutional and physician preference. If you give intravenous contrast, you do get a better look at the aortic arch and upper chest. You do have the ability to assess for dynamic findings, and the imaging overall is better with less noise. However, you have the added risk of giving contrast and then the added cost to the patient. In many occasions, a non-contrast MRA is sufficient to get a look at the carotid bifurcations and see the vast majority of findings that you're going to need to see. In summary, we've taken a look at an MRA of the neck. We've looked at some of the key things you need to look for, such as high-grade narrowing and the carotid bifurcations. We talked about a systematic pattern for following each vessel one at a time, going from anterior to posterior and then right to left. And then we talked about some of the reasons you might want to give contrast. Thank you for your attention today, and uh, hopefully you find this useful when you're looking at an MRA. If you found this video useful, then take a look at some of our other videos and subscribe to our channel.